Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Super Deluxe Gamescast. It is Thursday, August 10th, um, one week into being uh, 43 years old. It's uh, been... been a week. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Jeff, for getting it in, in two <laughs> words. <laughs> I'm not comfortable enough to carry the tune, but... Uh... No, me neither, but I can do the first two <laughs> words. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, I, have, I hope everybody's hope everybody's doing OK today. Um, all I had, the only shirt I had that's clean was this tank top. So if you're in chat, a little extra shouldery treat for everyone. If you're listening on <laughs> podcast services, you're missing out. You're really missing out on some prime uh, Boston butt on display. Yeah. Yeah. What can I say? I'm a big, beautiful, sexy, hairy man. So what can I say? Um, anyway, Derek, but you know what, Derek, you are also a big, beautiful, sexy, hairy man as well. I'm not a very big person, John. Um, I'm actually kind of on the short side. Derek, you got a big heart though. That's true. Oh, you got a big heart. You got a big heart. And Jeff, what, what can I say about Jeff that hasn't been said already? What what are you drinking there? Um, just beer, just local. Yeah. What, what, what is the, what is the, what is the, the actual, what is the the brewery? Uh, what is the brand it, we're talking it's, about? It's it's Alley Cat Orange Alley. beer. Yeah, Alley I've never Cat. heard of that shit. Well, it's it's local. Like most of the beers I buy. Oh, here are local, okay. So they're brewed. We got a big brewery scene. What are you drinking, John? I am drinking a Founders Breakfast Stout, which I don't is... think it's breakfast time, John. Oh no! It, see, it's always breakfast. It's breakfast time somewhere. But a breakfast stout is a nice stout with uh, oatmeal, chocolate, and um, caramel notes. And coffee, and uh, and it is fucking delicious. I think if you drink a stout for breakfast, we need to have a talk. Well, they call it breakfast stout because of the oatmeal, Derek. Come on, what are you drinking? What are you sipping there? Uh, this is a a wonderful spiced rum, the Boom Boo. Ooh. It's not a super expensive one, but it's a good one. I really like it. <laughs> Got a lot of hints of like you know, obviously vanilla because all spiced rum is heavy on vanilla. But like, there's some right. banana in there. You know, it's a little peppery. Um, it's fun. It's good. I like it. Awesome. Awesome. I like it. All right. One well, of the few rums I like to drink straight. As everyone can see in chat, smaller podcast tonight. But I like to say that with a smaller podcast, it's also more intimate. It's a more intimate experience. Yeah. Um, not every and, podcast needs to be five people yelling at each other. No, nah, not at all. Now it's just going to be three people yelling at each other. <laughs> um, it's the smaller ones because eventually it'll be a little balanced instead of six. Right. Him. <laughs> it basically, it'll be one big man yelling at two uh, smaller men. Um, John's about, like, I can take the two of you on, but five yeah. other people, that's starting to get a little <laughs> that's, dicey. That's stretching it. Like yeah. that, the five people. It's like, still I'm possible, not, but. Yeah, yeah, it, I, like it's conceivable, I think. But I think if you and Jeff and finn and cj i'm I'm leaving brit out of this because i would never raise a hand against brit but um if all if the rest of you like ganged up on me i'm not sure i could take you i was i was picturing like a megazord type like assembly (laughs) of (laughs) derek's like and i'll form the head (laughs) no it's honestly just um like bustin gets one of us on each arm and one of us on each leg (laughs) Yeah, so, so I was gonna say like like if you guys like if you guys did like a Voltron style, assembly, oh left foot obviously come you're on a foot I'm a left foot you're a sure. left foot okay Justin is Justin is the body Justin's the the torso for sure Just, big Bustin is the body where yeah. is where is Jeff I feel like I'm the hat you're the hat or the yeah. head no the hat the hat like, okay I'm just like, a little hat just chilling on top you're a hat you know, okay so, some kind of so accessory so, or headwear so then we've got Finn. CJ and Brit. Well, CJ's the right leg. CJ's obviously. the right leg. Finn, I feel like Brit Finn becomes the-, the two arms. It's kind of an unusual. He has to like split in half to do it. He that becomes sounds, the two arms. That sounds gross. Um, and then Brit? Brittany is like backpack and armor. I think. But then you don't have a head. Jeff is the hat. You don't. The body have a head. has a head. Uh, I watch a lot of Mecha John, and usually what happens is that the mm. the the center body of the robot, if it's a combiner, already has the head, and at most a helmet type appliance pops out from the body that it wasn't wearing before. Am I like the Ivan Ooze of this situation? Bulk and skull. <laughs> Derek, that's fucking that's mean, man. 
That's just me, dude. Holy shit. Bulk and skull, the bigs and wedge of Power Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had totally fucking forgot about those two. Um, all right. So <clears throat> this is a video game podcast, and we do have video games. In theory. About big week for video games. One of the largest big releases. Big week for video games, but not, a, not exactly a huge week for like news news. Not a huge um, week for news news, but it is a huge week for games. Yeah, um, so we've got a few things to talk about tonight. We're obviously, there's no way around it. We're going to talk a lot about Baldur's Gate, a lot of conversations around Baldur's Gate, a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of talk about like, you know, is this the way that the industry should be heading? Is it unfair to judge other games against Baldur's Gate, etc.? We'll talk about that some. Um, at at uh, Justin's suggestion, we might talk a little bit about um, Twisted Metal, the TV show, getting some surprising success. Now? It's out and it's had some really surprising success and really good ratings and um, really? kind of oh, kind of went against a lot of people's expectations. I was so there's, expecting a huge stinker, dude. I'm not going to lie well, to you. Well, and that might be part of the conversation, right, is a lot of people were mm-hmm. very quick to prejudge. Um, and then depending on time, depending on how things break out, we might talk about how um, certain major gaming events recently and expos have handled, um, you know, covid um, especially given we've had a couple of bad COVID outbreaks from events recently, um, you know, and kind of, you know, what, what we think we can be asking and should be asking, um, and where we should set our expectations for that kind of stuff. We'll see, you know, where, where we end up time-wise. There's three of us. We can make it fit. We can make it work. Oh yeah, for sure. Ain't five of us. We're not going to spend we, 45 we, minutes on what we've been playing. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> although I might spend 45 minutes on what I've been playing because I've been playing Baldur's Gate like a fucking, like like a cloistered monk, uh, deep in prayer for the yeah. for the last week. Um, I want to start. Got, oh, let's hold on to because obviously that's what you and I have both been playing. Um, Jeff, I want to hear from you first because I don't think it's Baldur's Gate, uh, unless it I, is. It's not Baldur's Gate, um, okay. but first I'm just going to give a small plug to a yes. charity I'm raising money for. Uh, a lot of people might be familiar with Make-A-Wish Foundation, um, so basically they're just uh, trying to make wishes come true for, for kids who are critically ill or very seriously um, sick. And the awesome thing about it is I think a lot of charities and like, um, it can be very like, I guess, nebulous in terms of how much your money makes an impact, but some of the wishes are as simple as like one kid um was going you know cancer treatment and because they're immunocompromised as a result uh they couldn't be with their friends they just wanted a ps5 to play that was literally their wish ps5 so like you know you can imagine any kind of modest donation makes a huge dent in that so like a lot of these are very modest um and very achievable and they make a huge difference in the lives of these children so yeah i'm uh playing in a charity softball tournament later this month and i'm trying to raise 500 bucks uh every little bit helps if it's two dollars five dollars ten dollars doesn't matter uh it, it really all makes a difference it's all going to a great cause but um yeah you can you can find the the link within the nightbot there in chat what i've been playing against my better judgment uh, after a year of retirement i am fucking back at flight simulator yeah oh, return yeah, I was trying to, well, they announced, you know, the, the new iteration. I talked about it, uh, I think, a couple months ago. Um, mm-hmm. It was at E3 or, you know, the the time in June formerly known as E3. So there is a new version coming out next year. I was going to hold off because it sounds like the reason the current one is such a broken disaster uh, is just because it's using code from 2006. And it sounds like the new one's going to fix most of it. But uh, I got a new monitor and I, I just had to 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 try it out and yeah I'm, I'm having a good time with it I don't really have anything extra to say it's just uh, nice to settle back in um, it's just a super chill experience it's really relaxing it's something I really enjoy uh, for the most part for the most part um, so I think that that's pretty much it and then uh, I talked about Valheim very briefly last week but I I spent so much time talking about Final Fantasy 16 I didn't really uh give it too much of the time of day Um, but yeah uh like valheim is something i'd recommend to anyone who really likes minecraft i think it's really cool i like my i have no problem kind of like like i said like even with flight simulator it's very directionless i have no problem really making my own kind of fun or finding my own path in games uh but i know a lot of people need structure and i think a cool thing about valheim is it has a lot of the freedom and creativity of minecraft But it's definitely more structured, like um, there's more guidance, the goals are very clearly defined, there's like six bosses, 
um, and the way it kind of introduces them gradually and points you in the direction without like necessarily giving you like an objective marker, I think is is really cool and interesting. Um, and it's just honestly, I'm, I'm playing with a group of friends and it's just a really uh, great thing to kind of collaborate with people. Um, and, and I think it's like probably more fun that way. Um, but yeah, it's it's really good. And I recommend anyone who who likes those kind of games, try it out. Uh, that's I think that is pretty much all I've been playing. I got some games. I uh, I think I mentioned in chat before, but I'm uh, after six, Final Fantasy 16, I kind of want to play some smaller stuff to like decompress. So I've got uh, Tacoma lined up, uh, a little game called Lake, where you're basically small town mail delivery, kind of a narrative game, very short. Uh, Abzu, I'm finally going to play. Love Journey, and I've heard this is, you know, basically Journey underwater. <laughs> so uh, yeah, these should be chill, really relaxing games. I'm really stoked to play some of them. That's, awesome. that's, that's about all I got going on. Okay. All right. Uh... Derek, what what have you and I been playing? I mean, we've been playing, we've been playing the same shit. Um, for the past week, I've been playing. All right, it's time to talk about Baldur's Gate three. What the? F- what is Derek doing? Oh, he's on the. Oh, he's on the phone. Okay. So for the past week, I have been playing. I'm like talking to Derek. I, I like. I thought he was like <laughs> maybe eating some dinner, or like like just off screen, like oh like I eating some ramen, shoving some ramen into his face or something. Uh, but, but so for the past week, I've been playing. Uh, I've been playing Baldur's Gate three. Um, now, uh, I I've never played like pen and paper D anD D, but I have played you know like you know Neverwinter Nights, Neverwinter Nights two, Baldur's Gate one and two. So like I'm familiar with, and I read uh, like all of the Forgotten Realms books uh, when I was a teenager. So like I'm I'm familiar with the world. I've just never played the actual like pen and paper game. Um, I absolutely am in love with this fucking game. Um, it is, it is so. Like I love games that that take choice and put it back in the hands of players, right? Like player agency is is absolutely key in this game. Like where do I even begin? Um, you know, so it's, it's, well, I'll start with character creation. I went with Penis D. Um, you know, I, you know, I, I, there's like, can you, des- I think- can you describe penis D to us? Yeah, sure. No problem. So, so nobody is cut in the forgotten realms. Everybody is uncircumcised. So, so everybody's got, you know, the skin sheath, um, penis a, I felt like, um, I felt like there was an imbalance between, you know, left and right balls. It, it looked to me mm-hmm. like the right ball was a little bit lower than the left ball. And I'm somebody in, in my personal life. Anyway, I appreciate symmetry um well and I, in combat you don't want that little discrepancy throwing you off balance right, right in a, exactly. in a well, plus, situation well plus if you have a testicle that hangs lower than the other then you risk uh testicular uh, torsion which mm-hmm. is one with the testicles get twisted around each other and you have to have like surgery to fix that so you don't you don't want that um so uh penis b i felt like the the ball to shaft ratio was off and even though like i'm not it's not like i'm running around Faerun without my pants on but at the same time um, I knew that that was going to stick in my head. Like I knew that the ball to shaft ratio was going to be, was going to be off there. And and if I know it's there, then it's like a splinter in my hey mind. Hey man, right? this is a really awful time to be coming back to the fucking podcast is <laughs> in the middle of penis discussion. <laughs> so, um, so, so before I was rudely interrupted by Derek. Penis, penis E, by the way. So, so no, well, no, Derek, I'm only on penis C now. Penis C. We're um, breaking down all of them. Yeah, we're, we got to break down all the all the penile. Penis options. C like, is a little too penisy, if you know what I mean. Penis C was penis C. I, I can't felt tell if like, you guys are joking or you guys actually spent so much time on this that you remember. It each took individual. me thirty <laughs> seconds to figure out which dick I was picking. You, like, you got to look at, at some point that dick is going to be inside someone in the game, like you know Christ. you would think. So or you, something you want to look your best. You want to look your best. Penis C. I didn't like the grooming. Yeah, the grooming like on it. a couple of these was really bad. So. Yeah, not not a fan of the grooming on penis C. Um, I, I eventually I went with penis D. Um, penis D, I felt you know it, it was a it was a good size. Um, you can't no, Rar, you cannot choose different grooming per dick. You're stuck with uh, you're stuck with the grooming that you um, that comes with the penis. And there's God, no I'm like so... you know, And see, here's the thing: you're walking around in favor. Is this right? because like, I took the phone call? Is that why we're doing this? No. I'm just okay. starting off with my with my experience in in uh, Baldur's Gate three, Baldur's Gate, if you know what I'm saying. Um, but there's but you can't change the grooming options because there are no like there's no like manscaped lawnmowers 
uh, that exist in Faerun, so you can't like really trim your balls at all. Uh, so I went with penis D. I, I like the symmetry. Um, you know, I I, I want to know that you know I want to know in my head while I'm killing gnolls and and goblins that you know I've got a I've got some well formed junk. So I went with penis D. Derek, what was your choice? Oh, uh, penis E. Why? I mean, let's break it down. It's the most heavily groomed option. It's a big deal. Mm. Yeah, I can see how that would be important. I just for believe you. in. I believe in in shaving. I don't know what to tell people. You're um, a, you're a you're a, you're a man of meticulous nature. I shave um, my armpits. I'd shave my chest if I had a lot of chest hair, and I I have almost none, so that's not a problem. Um, you know, despite my beard, I'm I'm not much of a bear. Um, I don't know what to say. That's that's as far down that rabbit hole that I'm willing to go. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, somebody made a comment in, in chat, Derek, and I think this applies to the real world. Like, it, like if you were rolling a 20-sided die for every aspect of your life, what would you have to roll for proper grooming? What would you have to roll? What would, what, what would your saving throw be? I feel like ultimately it's charisma, right? It's Charisma has got to be the stat that leads into grooming because it's a matter... Like, grooming affects charisma, right. but you I have think. to care, right? You have to, like, want that you know, and want that effect in order to put the effort in to like actually put a little product in your hair, shape up your beard, etc. Yeah. So, so, you know. so I feel if like you, you don't have would... charisma, you just end up with the fucking quartering beard, and that's nobody right. wants you don't that. Want that. You don't want no. that. Um, no, the and, fucking uh, Amish beard. No, thank you. Yeah, from what I've heard, even his wife doesn't want that. Anyway, <laughs> um, uh, oop. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so Derek, what would your save, like, what would you have to roll to sex to like get successful grooming in real life? Like I figured for you dexterity. Okay. I mean, if you want to talk about the, the process of actually doing it, not deciding it, like, I was gonna say, look, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm a little, I need to, to go over it again, but like lining yourself up, right. Getting a nice, even mm -hmm. under the, again, you can see where I've, I've, gr I need to shave down. I can see that again. Yeah. But like getting a nice, even symmetrical line takes a little work. It does. Right. It, does. it takes a little work to know how to properly work a little clay into your hair. You know, I mean, I wish I had that problem. I wish I, I wish I could work. You got a good beard though, bud. I've got a good beard. Well, it's more of a mustache, more of a beard stash really right now, but you've kind of got a, just a whole normal thing going on. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I'm a very normal guy. Um, but yeah, so so Derek, while you were on the phone call, I was explaining that um like as somebody who's never played pen and paper D D, but who has played yeah, you've read some of the books. I know I think you played like Neverwinter Nights. So or I've you played tons, Neverwinter Nights one and that's it. So, no, so 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 I've read tons of the of the Forgotten Realms books. Right. Um, like Drista Erden is one of my favorite literary characters. Um uh I've played Neverwinter Nights, Neverwinter Nights two, like the expansions like Shadows of Om. Um, I've played uh, Planescape Torment. Uh, okay. I played Baldur's Gate one and two. I played Icewind Dale. So I'm so very you've played the, the classic, a lot yeah. of the the well known classic D and D games. Yeah, but all that, um, most of that's based on um, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Second Edition. Right. Right. Other than Neverwinter Nights is um, third, and I think three five for Neverwinter Nights two. So like that's a little more modern, but like I'll, yeah, fifth well, is just character. a lot more streamlined. As somebody who loves like the world of of D and D, like 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 you know, I've read some of the books in Kryn as well. You know the Dragonlance yeah. books, um, but Forgotten Realms is my favorite by a country mile. As somebody who was super into that world, but never just sat down to play the pen and paper game, I went from like Baldur's Gate three. Like I was always kind of ambivalent on playing D and D. But I'm fucking stoked now. You're fucking now. ready like, for I'm it. Fucking, Not just I'm, because it's something to do with the buds. By the way, Dorian in chat saying, "I can't wait for the SDGC oh, game." Oh, I can't wait now either. It like, is coming. It is. I know that we've been radio silent on it for a while. I know I originally was like, "Yeah, I want to try to get it trust get me, started early it. this year." It's. I mean, well, the problem is it's all on me, right? So like, I'm doing a shitload of planning. I haven't had a good. I've been busy with a lot of side projects, but like, I think especially like at the get together might be a good time to like hash out some of the details with everybody. Um, get, get some character ideas finalized, get it, get it ready to get rolling. So we are going to do that. So, for sure. so, so Derek, let me ask you this. Did you get the, um, the fire sword at the very beginning? No, no, I wouldn't have been able to use it anyway. I'm a druid. Yeah. Okay. But you can give it one of your party members. I guess that's true. So uh, what I did was I used Shadowheart to cast Command Drop on that Commander Demon, 
and he just dropped his uh, flaming sword. See shit and like I, that. That's brilliant. I, just, I love I that. Just, I just went and picked it up, and I was like, oh shit. I was like, fuck. Um, we should have Martha is, could use that because Mar- I'm playing with my wife. And um, she's playing a, a a fighter specializing in like two handed weapons. That's she exactly just wants what to I'm be. Doing. She just wants to be somebody who hits fucking hard, and I respect that. That's um, exactly. I I'm respect a, a strong woman who wants to see people die in front of her eyes uh, oh, for Carlac. daring to stand in her way. Oh, Carlac, uh, we're gonna. So get it's been a lot Carlac. of. I'm I'm playing a druid because um, I want to be like a supportive, like healing caster with a little no, utility. No, you want to fuck people as a bear. I don't. I actually picked the subclass of druid that does not give me the bear form so oh um, you don't want to have bear sex i wanted the ability to replenish my own spell slots and that meant uh, Derek, more to me totally missed out on the opportunity to build a relationship with someone and then say i'd like to bear myself to you i'd like to bear it all to you how are you like this i don't know um but anyway so yeah it's like you know my wife's playing a fighter i'm playing a druid um, we're keeping usually a Sterion and Will on right now. So we have our, our rogue and Will as an arcane caster, kind of flexible, also has the charisma to actually, cause none of us have charisma. Are you kidding me? We can't persuade shit. So, um, yeah, it's good. I haven't, I've met obviously Lazel. I've met, uh, Gail. Um, you know, I have not met Carlac, who everyone keeps telling me I need to meet, uh, will happen oh. sooner or later. Um, so, yeah. so I got to tell you, when I first met Carlac, I audibly went, oh, yeah, like, like, and I, as I was telling you, so Carlac is a big, red, sexy tiefling. She's a tiefling. Yeah. Um, and, I'm, I'm and, playing a tiefling, by the way. So tiefling and, druids and, are an interesting combo, yeah. especially given the first act of the game. Wasn't expecting that to be, you know, that she's way. she's very red. She's very hot. Uh, she like figuratively and literally, um, John, if you keep watching uh, (laughs) critical role, like animated stuff, you're eventually going to become a jester Stan. I know it. Derek, I'll, Derek, I'll, I'll tell you what, most of the other party members, like all your other party members, whenever they act act, like, you know, do something in battle, they're like, you know, you know, ah, it's my time or, you know, like, you know, Rook to night seven, but she just goes, oh, fuck. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's a good way oh, to react. Oh, Carlac. And, she, and she's like, and, and, she, and she's like, if, 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 like, if you heal her, like my main character heals her, she, she's like, oh, thanks, baby. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> mm. like, like I said it, uh, I said it before we went live, but not that I'm saying like, y- y- you know, young teens should be playing this game necessarily, but I will say that Carlac is going to be a sexual awakening for so many people this generation Here's um, a, i'll tell you right now too because she's a tiefling there's a solid chance she's quite a bit older than you so you can call her mommy mm. derek you know how i feel about that too yeah. um like tieflings mm. tieflings tieflings live like 200 250 years if i'm right so yeah so dorian dorian says john's has a type strikes again yeah my type is apparently um large monster women who yeah can, john who can likes either... evil women who can fucking kill him mm-hmm Mm-hmm. And also Vicky. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why I love Vicky. Um, <laughs> she's not evil, but she could absolutely kill me. Um, but uh, so so but, but but here is one thing that I love. Like in all seriousness, this right here for like like there was a moment that I that happened earlier this week that was just like made me sit back and just gasp. And so I came across a burning in. Right. There's like there's like an inn that's burning down and there's people inside screaming like, oh, you got to save so and so. Right. You got to save so and so. And you can hear the guy in there and, you know, he's like, oh, help me. So I was really low. So I had just got done like finding some knolls and I was, you know, like I need to I, I needed to like, you know, replenish my spell slots and stuff like that. And I was low on health. So I was like, OK, I'm going to do a, a long rest and I'm going to come back and save the people from the burning inn. So I did my long rest and I came back and the inn had fucking burned <laughs> yeah, down. Yeah, it turns out you can't sleep overnight when an inn is on fire, dipshit. Like, so, so, but, but here's the thing. <laughs> I brought that video game mentality into it, right? Like, uh-huh, okay, you like, shouldn't do re- that. Let me replenish my health and, and everything will be fine. But no, everything is happening in real time. So that, that inn fucking burned down. Reb then- actually did an article um, kind of investigating like the, the game's tendency for like certain things to advance you know, in not, not in like real time, but like certain events actually being on a timer. 
You know, in terms of like you took too long, did too many quests, rested too many times, etc. So this thing happened without you. Um, And I think that's interesting to put. I really like the aspects of that. I really like it because it it gives. I'm just thinking back to our Final Fantasy 16 talk last week, where it's like you do the 40 side quests at the end, yeah, right before the end of the game. Fuck, game over. It's yeah, like, exactly. Know, like, okay, Ultima is about to. That's how turn. this game actually works. So. Yeah, it's like Ultima is about to turn everyone into the into the world to zombies. Then he's going to end the world. But first, I got to go pick. Them I up. am really glad that you picked like a fictional scenario version of the end of FF16. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, that but, would have been that would have been pretty lame. I think if that was the actual uh, end scenario. But yeah. Uh, but, but um, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it. For yeah, anyone. thank you um, for that. For a moment, I was like, "Is he good?" I was like, "Oh no, he's saying no. some bullshit." Um, um, but uh, but but yeah. So that to me really just sold the urgency of everything that's happening in the game, and like it makes really you role play. It state. makes you yeah. think about making this. And that's the thing: a game like Baldur's Gate, right? Something like this, which is kind of, we'll get to this a little more later, but like. I mean, fuck it. We're kind of in Baldur's Gate now. So like this is just going to extend into the discussion about its success. But like the thing about Baldur's Gate is it is a game that makes you feel like your choices matter. And it's not in Mm -hmm. terms of like having a bunch of branching storylines, but rather in having a bunch of small things, small stories, small side quests, small character stories whose you know, who, who, who are affected by the world around them in surprisingly interconnected ways. Um, and it's, it's very obvious that there's just a lot of stuff you will never see your first time through the game because you just make choices that lock things off entirely. Um, but you know, again, the fact that like, again, the end can burn down because you took too long and fucked around means that when you come up to a burning in, you have to make the decision of am I <coughs> doing this or not? Yeah. You know, instead of just, oh, this is a side quest I'll finish later. It was you know? wild, dude. Like, and you let, yeah, you, like you can't bring that, okay, I see, like, you know, I see a quest giver, you know, logo, glowing pillar of light mentality to this game. Yeah. Um, because things will happen irregardless of whether or not you're there. There are, um, there are obvious limits to that. Like, you can't make a game with infinite storytelling complexity you know and a lot of it's (coughs) like really clever artifice in setting up an illusion of things being more complicated than they are um but little things like like an inn being able to burn down because you took a rest instead of you know doing it or going off to do another quest instead like and leaving it to burn down um it puts you it takes you out of the mindset of playing most games where it's just a checklist of to do's and it puts you closer to the mindset of actually sitting down and playing like a tabletop, like pen and paper RPG, like Mm -hmm. Dungeons and Dragons, you know, with a, with a DM who's presenting you with a scenario and it's like, what are you doing? You don't know what's going to happen from this. And I'm sure that more and more playthroughs will strip the magic out of that. Right. As people begin to understand what makes certain things happen, but playing through this ignorant, Right. And coming in and allowing yourself to, you know, to be invested in it as it presents itself to you. Right. This is a game like don't look up guides. Don't do that shit. Don't. I understand now why Larian was like, don't look up character building guides. Don't do this shit. Just fuck around. Find out. We want you not to do this shit. Uh, Because the more you look up about this game. Right. And I, I think look up in terms of like guides and like plays like Fextra Life and shit, right? Not people yeah. talking about their experiences. Um, you know, but I think that ruins the magic. You know, if you start to try to break apart the if thens of it. I so I've been I've been trying to figure out whether or not Jeff would like this game. Um I think I would love it. it so and, and Jeff, there's difficulty levels. Yeah. No, I yeah. uh, um I mean I've been interested since it entered early access. It's on my list to grab. Um I've never I was saying in chat like I feel dumb. I didn't even know uh that I didn't know Baldur's Gate was part of D- like I didn't know the relationship with D and D. I never played like I, I've heard of Neverwinter Nights, I heard of Baldur's Gate one and two. Um I think actually there was a studio here in Edmonton that remastered them a few years ago, Beam Dog, and they yep. were on the news. Yeah. Yep. Um Unfortunately the Neverwinter Nights remaster was a disaster. I don't know. I don't um, think it's bad. Hmm. I think it's fine. But, um yeah no it's just it's just something that's completely foreign to me but 
uh, I've always kind of wanted to get into like one of, I don't know what the genre is exactly, but like this type of RPG, um, like I mentioned before. You know, like tabletop, Div- the pen and paper yeah, RPG, like, yeah. Um, like I tried Divinity Original Sin too, and same, I and I fell off it like, pretty hard. Yeah, I fell off and like, too. but like I, I could tell like there's a version of something like this that I'm gonna love, but it's not this. And Baldur's, I think Baldur's Gate, Gate is this. Looked, like, yeah, looked like Wait. that, and I, I love that. Like, um, you know, again, I haven't played it, but it seems to me like it's one because. I, I was just talking about how I love kind of games where I can kind of make my own path. Like that's what I'm doing. A lot of these, obviously this is a game with a campaign and a structure, but it's like the the part I get frustrated in with games is like where there's maybe even a few different ways, but like kind of like if you can't figure it out, you get stuck. And that's what happened with division original sin two. And it sounds like with this one, it's like if you fuck up or can't figure like something else present itself or the inn will burn down or like, but it doesn't sound it's- like there's huge barriers. Um, like I think it's past. much more cleverly designed. Mm-hmm. I think being based on D and D fifth edition um, helps like the gameplay mechanics and systems be based on something that to be frank is much more thought out than like the gameplay systems behind divinity original sin. Um, you know, mm-hmm. because you know, one is, 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 is divinity based on another existing or is that completely original? Delirium? It's original. And, yeah. and, and it's, it's a difference between like a small game studio coming up with their own rule set and like the biggest, most extensively play tested RPG system in the world. Um, you well, know. It, it's like Derek, that was my issue with divinity is uh, like, I was playing divinity and I was like, you know, I played it for a couple hours and I was like the whole time I was, I I realized I was just wishing this was like a Neverwinter Nights or Baldur's Gate game. Yeah. And, and And like, honestly, this is like, like, and, and like, I couldn't get over that and I dropped it. Does that make sense? I was like, this is good, but it just makes me want another Icewind Dale or Neverwinter Nights. And, you know, honestly, dude, like God, with, with the way that Larian has handled Baldur's Gate three, Neverwinter Nights three, baby do it like let's let's make somebody should be on it i don't know if it should be larian because they've started said that they want their next game to be something smaller in scale yeah, I wouldn't um, that. um yeah but 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 i think it's i think it's it's so here's the thing like i i, I bounced off divinity original sin 2 because it was bullshit hard because it, it felt it felt masochistic or no not mas- sadistic it felt sad- I'm, uh, other side uh it felt sadistic in the way that it tried to build like the world and the story progression, et cetera, quests like for the character, you walk into that first town and it's like, there's almost like, there's so few things you can do that don't feel like they're immediately throwing you in over your head. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Something about the logic behind Baldur's Gate's world presents as a lot more approachable. Um, the storytelling aspects, right, feel cl- more at home in like something like Dragon Age or Mass Effect, right? It really feels like Golden Age Bioware. Um, it does actually, know. yeah. And, and which, I mean, like, great. Um, and I don't think it's as hard, right? Even I mean, like, Baldur's Gate Three can still absolutely just like sack tap you for no reason. Oh, dude, for sure. So like, al- always be saving, like always be saving. Save. But if you wander into a fight. Oh. In Divinity, in, in Divinity Original Sin 2, it felt like every single fight I wandered into was, I was not set up. I was like, I need to be five levels earlier from the start yeah. to even handle this. Baldur's Gate, if you run into stuff you can't handle, like, it should be plainly obvious what mistakes you made. Or you can be like, I'm just not supposed to do this yet. I'm going to go in another direction and, and figure some shit out. And, it's you a, and it's not like there's a lack of shit to do if you've hit a barrier. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's so much fucking shit to do there's so much shit to see like like dude i just like you know a couple hours in my game i stumbled into the underdark and i was like i'm already in the underdark what the fuck you shouldn't have done that and i promptly got hammered by a bullet um and yeah like and but and then i went i was like ages and then i was like no 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 I want to go back. So I went back and I, I, I avoided the bullet climbed some cliffs and I got just railroaded by a fucking spectator. Um, and, uh, which for anybody who doesn't know, it's like a beholder. Uh, and I was like, and dude, it just, it ruined me. And I was like, this game, fu-. but here's the thing, dude, I loved that because as somebody who really loves like, you know, the Metroid franchise for that, f- that feeling of 
it's an entire it's a whole ass hostile fucking world versus you and 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 you all you have to rely on is yourself Baldur's gate is really scratching that itch for me the world feels dangerous and i like like, me and martha ran into like you know a swamp hag you know in a side quest that like yeah i did her yeah that that story quest that's that story quest was um like we just weren't quite ready for that but then we turned around we went another direction we found like a goblin camp you know we found some goblins who'd overtaken a small town and like we could handle that you know and it was like okay it was some work uh yes yes but like clever usage of like segmenting off playing a little stealthy like we tore that place up right and i I sent a gnome into space by accident so huh i talked my way in there didn't kill anyone yeah but where's the fun in that um but here's the thing but but here's the thing though um very early in the game so i'm in act two now um i just started as little as possible i just started act two and what i will say is that i had an option to kill someone uh that i think a lot of people would have taken and i i didn't and all of a sudden that person has popped up in act two and is now a, a, like a, a a fairly large part of the main storyline. And I'm I'm like, what happens if you kill this person? Um, because it was I would just be given, curious. Yeah, it's just such an like the game is like it's given to you as like you know this this choice you're making is not the end of the world, right? Like like, and so I chose not to kill this person. Now this person is a major player in Act Two, and I'm like, there's wow, permanently so. missable party characters right in the first act, like a Your lot of permanently leave, missable. I, as I found out, by the way, really interesting. Um, yeah, so just like it's a big, very <laughs> organic feeling game. Organic feeling in terms of like you rarely feel like, oh, I've been shepherded down one of this this one of two hallways. You know, um, I think you would really like it, Jeff. I just think I you also too, need to always be saving. Um, yeah. You save con- but but jeff like you're somebody who appreciates a very rich narrative um mm-hmm. and and player choice right? story and, setup's interesting i'm, I'm and, i want to know what's up the thing again like i you know you gave the mass effect call out um the other thing i love about again what i've seen of the game is i i love a big good narrative but i struggle with um ones that are kind of presented in the form of like what from software does or even something that's like very, very heavily text based. I kind of need traditional voice acting, traditional cutscenes. Like um, you, you know, come from a realm of, of the like details. Yeah, you come from a realm of like cinema in a lot of ways, right? I yeah. mean, when you joined SDGC, like a part of what you were doing was pause for popcorn. Mm-hmm. You know, so like obviously, like you're looking for expression. You're looking for like acting and performance and, yeah. and character building and things like that. Mm-hmm, so. for sure and like it and it seems like it has that. and that's not to say i don't respect games that don't have that approach it's just they don't hit the same for me um personally because that's just not how my brain really kind of processes big emotions it's different just reading them on a screen versus like hearing them delivered by someone so i i think it's very cool that like you and especially like you know um kind of immersing your own character in the world it's very cool to see your character represented in those scenes visually. And I think it's really cool from what I understand and very rare uh, playing co-op with friends to see their characters in the cutscenes. Yes. With that you. Cool. That is so rare in games. It usually is like, cool. it's just one of them or it shows each person their own character, but not everyone. That was um, one of the, very, the first cool. questions I had as we were starting the game. Cause I was like, okay, Martha, yeah. how is this going to work with the cutscenes? Who's who is it going to show? Yeah. Or is it going to do like the same cutscene and just like, you know, like, are we only going to see player one? Or are we each going to see mm-hmm. kind of like in Destiny, of right? Like, or something Maybe, like, I don't know. You know I don't play yeah. Destiny, but, <laughs> but, but instead, <laughs> like, me and Martha did, you know, split screen co op, which, by the way, like, the game's only out on PC right now. It's, it's hitting PlayStation in like a September what, 6th. It's okay. also cross play and cross save, by the way. Good. Yeah. Um, but like, even the PC version has local split screen co op. Um, so it's been great to just like run this out to the TV, get a pair of Xbox controllers, you know, mm-hmm. but, the very first cutscene like opens up and both the characters are like waking up in the opening predicament and to realize that like, Oh, we have different camera angles even on our cutscenes because we're each waking up in a different like pod in the same starting location. That's cool. It's like, Oh, they care. Right. The first person who gets to any like location triggered cutscene is the person in that cutscene. The second person will be there like with the party, but the person who ran ahead 
is the primary like experiencer of the events. You know, if somebody gets into a conversation, like my half of the screen will be me talking to somebody and Martha can just be off running around fucking off doing whatever, you know, or she can come up, listen, join in. It expands to full screen. She can get like a vote. That's in very cool. What we say and say like, cool. hey, your partner is, which I presume is how it works in like even four player co-op is different people can say like we're voting on these options, but the person having the conversation has the final say. Uh, very, very D&D. You know, mm-hmm. so this is an excellent, um, you know, co-op for for people who are um, who have the, the fortitude to deal with it, because like, again, I say this is a lot more streamlined and stuff like Divinity and stuff like older D&D, but this is still D&D. I still had to explain how to calculate armor class to Martha, and I think I watched her uh, start to cry <laughs> as she realized, like, that this is just too many rules. So, and I don't blame because a lot of people don't like numbers. So. Well, and that's the thing, and and that's important to 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 point out to a lot of people. You know, uh, is you know, hey, yes, this is a turn based RPG, but it is also very much steeped in the D and D rules. You are rolling dice for literally just about everything you do. It makes it as approachable as possible, but you're getting in the weeds of some rules. Yeah, so. like you will have like I had to look up D and D rules. I was going to um, say, like, my I don't mind that if it's presented in the game, but if I'm people are telling me, go watch this YouTube video, go to the site, I'm kind of... Mm. Everything has an explainer in the game, yeah, right? It, like, it when does. you pick classes, okay. it has, like, here's the things that you get for doing this, and you can hit, like, yeah. the back button and get more in-depth explanations on yeah, that's great. each thing or, like, the highlighted mm-hmm. words. So it's like, what does advantage mean? That's what advantage means. And I want to say, I want to stress... I didn't go look up the rules because I felt I had to. I was just intrigued mm-hmm. at that point. Yeah. Um, the nice thing is, again, if you if you want to look something up, like ninety nine percent of it is going to be looking up mm-hmm. the actual rules to D and D five, which yep. are extremely well documented at this point. <laughs> so you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I I um I, I you know I am having a, just an absolute. This game is just a joy. You want to talk um, about a stealth uh, game of the year contender? You know, oh, yeah. I was expecting like, this to be big, but frankly, this, I mean, like this, this is already feeling like it could be my game of the year. Well, and it's that's also like overtaking one of the some biggest big... steam launches ever, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's, mm-hmm. this game is mad and it's still not out on consoles. This is going to be huge. It's, I think it's like the number one pre-order game on PS5 right now. Yeah. Um, Which, uh, you know, I'm going to double dip on this one. Um, wow. Be- like that's how much you think I you and Vicky will do co-op. Or do you think Vicky? Do you think your your marriage couldn't survive it? I think Vicky doesn't give a shit about D and D, so so I I doubt it. Um, I, I would I'm, I might ask her. I would yeah. love for her to join me. Um, but uh, it's easier when you can sit on a couch together with controllers and you know. Right. Yeah. Which is why I'm I'm like well that's why I want to get it on PS5. Right. But yeah. like honestly, like the most compelling reason to get on to do that is because it has cross save. Like. You know, I can just bring my, and you know, this game is going to get at least two expansions. So I, so I, I mean, it's going to get so. at least, yeah, like at least two, if not more based on just how, because the, you know, I mean, I, right now, like it's I the know way that, that the franchise works to be fair. I mean, well, it is well, like, and, and, but also like right now, Larian is like, oh shit. Like even Larian was not expecting the response to this. Um, And you know that they are already brainstorming DLC ideas. Um, and uh, you know, like I would love to like go to Waterdeep or, you know, like, or, or Neverwinter or, you know, oh, yeah, we got this goofy water Davian asshole Gale in the party. And I was like, all right, I see you. And, uh, oh, and by the way, a very, very classic forgotten, a, a, one of the most prominent forgotten realms characters pops up at the beginning of act two, put a huge smile on my face. Okay. I'm going to tell you who it is. Okay. Um, but I was like, but if you know anything about Forgotten Realms, you will know exactly who this is. And I'm like, oh shit, it's that person. Um, I almost said the name, um, but I don't want to spoil it for anyone. So now I'm like, are there any other characters from the books I read uh, who are who are going to pop up? Um, it's kind of actually, Derek. It's actually kind of fucking amazing that I never played pen and paper D and D, right? Uh, I mean, in, in retrospect, like you seem the type, which is a big part of why I wanted to do SCGC D and D, right? It was like, it, a, it could be something we do together, but also like, I know most of the crew has not really played any D and D meaningfully. I think Finn and Brit seem to have a little experience. Well, I'll, I'll tell but, you, I'll tell you this much, Derek, like Baldur's Gate, like I originally was just going to roll like a joke character, but I'm, yeah. I'm like fully taking it seriously now. I'm, like, 
I, well, I'm trying to craft a campaign that allows for both, right? That allows you to play it very seriously and like has its moments of serious storytelling. But like, there's so much le- I mean, you. I can't make a story and setting and not be a little funny with it. You know oh, what course. I mean? This yeah. is not the kind of person I am. So we're so, we're going to be closer to the Dimension 20 side of things than the Critical Role side of things, but nowhere near as polished or cool as either. So. so so Derek, I was going to ask you a question. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Because I thought of you the moment I met this character. What are your thoughts on Uh-oh. Asterion? Uh, okay. So first off, I took... I think longer than I was supposed to, to figure out what's up with this asshole. Um, because in retrospect, and like, this isn't even a spoiler. The internet has already made it open. Like you can tell this stuff from like, basically from minute one, if you really pay attention to him. But, um, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a Dracula man. He's He's a a vampire. vampire. And like, now I'm like, Oh yeah, he's got the fucking teeth and the red eyes and he's an albino. And the, the the fucking that right and like all of the little hints from the moment you meet him yeah um but asterion's a fun character he's a good example the whole cast so far is largely it's my favorite kind of D cast which is when you get a ragtag group of assholes right who are all hurt a little bit right who have been through some shit who are hiding you know their vulnerability and who need to warm up and open up. That is a staring craving that nussy. Yeah, that's what I said. On, that's what I said on, on, on the Twitters. I'm sure I'm not the only person who's ever said that, but Jesus um, Christ, who need they nussy ate? But, oh um, my God. but like, you know, Asterion, like it's very easy to be like, Oh, you have a vampire party member and he's a bad guy. And it's like, well, not, not really. He's somebody who's been forged by circumstances. Right. You get to meet like everyone's clown on like shadow heart being like the fucking Ashley Williams, the racist of the, of the cast. And okay, like, so, okay, okay. So explain this to me. Cause I like, I'm romancing her and I haven't seen any racism. Like, I mean, the like, very first thing she says, if you meet her and you've got Lazelle in the party is like, Oh, that thing, Ugh, get it away from me. Like, I mean, I just, I, I take it as that she just doesn't like get the Yankee. Like that's I mean, called racism, John. <laughs> But I mean, <laughs> Gith Yankee are like roundly evil. Huh? Like Gith Yankee are like murderously evil. Like I wouldn't like them either. John, like, that's racism. <laughs> they're not. Gith Yankee are evil as shit. No, they're not. Dude, I mean, they're like yes, to a they certain are. degree culturally, but like John, the first section of the game is you running into the Druid circle, and the Druids think all the tieflings are evil because that's who they are inherently. Like. But the Gith Yankee are literal astral plane pirates. <laughs> like they're not good people. They're not bad people. This is their culture. They're D- Derek. Derek. They're not. The Gith Yankee are bad. You can they're play bad. Gith Yankee and them not be evil characters. They are okay, not so inherently. Gith Yan- so somebody in chat, Gith Yankee are kind of dicks, but they don't see it that way. Right. It's like, like Gith Yankee Nazis are just didn't see themselves that the way. The Gith Yankee right. are just space elves, John. That's all they are. Yeah, but they're very evil space elves. Not really. Derek, the Gith Yankee are evil. They literally made a deal with Tiamat. Uh, yeah, yeah, Derek's like, uh, Shadow Hearth's yeah, still like, racist. Um, I, I mean, I'm just saying, Derek. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you gotta be willing to judge God. people as individuals. And she meets, Every she meets Yankee, an individual Gith Yankee and is just like, don't like you. I ran into a Gith Yankee and the first thing he did was tell me, literally, out, out in the world, literally he he was like oh look a human give me one good reason i shouldn't run you through right now and then he referred to me as scum well he's so racist I, clearly they're so. they're evil derek the gift evil. are evil so this is here's the thing this actually gets into a, it's a big conversation that's been going on in D for a while which is like D and like classic fantasy tropes right are often built on on a sort of like biological essentialism of of certain races of peoples um and for a long time we've been okay with that because of the idea of like well dwarves are dwarves and elves are elves and orcs are orcs and you know humans are everything right like because well it's not racist because like they're you know dwarves can be different from humans um but the problem is right like we've come to a you know understanding of like for people of color right? Especially it's very uncomfortable to see the way that, that something like D and D goes 
well, all elves are this way, right? All dwarves are this way. All orcs are this way, especially when orcs often fundamentally fall into like stereotypes about indigenous peoples, um, you know, of, of being like dangerous savages, etc. cetera. Um, I, I would say this, if, if, if you're just like a farmer in the fields, right. In Faerun and your only experience with orcs are the pillaging, murdering and, and raping orcs, then yeah, I would hate orcs too. If I, if that's well, all I knew of orcs. Yeah. But, but I think the argument that, and the conversation people are having is like, we've got to do better with D and D and with other, and that's why even like D and D is making big, it used to be that if you picked like an elf and I think Baldur's gate might, it, it defaults this way, but you're not hard locked into it. Like if you pick an elf, you get like plus two to intelligence and plus one to dexterity or whatever it is, you know? <laughs> uh, and yeah, cause they're more nimble, right? Well, but like, that's like saying that black people run better. You know what I mean? It's that's that's the argument people are making is like you can't really say that mm. certain races are by default, especially when they're all meant to be extensions of human player characters, right? So like um this I mean, is I, this is just a big thing we're grappling with right now and trying to find out how to how to um mix these and Baldur's Gate does some things good and some things bad with it, right? Baldur's Gate gives you the option to pick you know, where your stat bonuses go. They're not tied to your race. You know, I think it's reasonable to be like, yeah, elves have dark vision. It's literally the way their eyes work. But like to be like, yeah, elves like uh, have a an I an average IQ of like 15 points higher is getting a little bit skull calipery, you know, um, but like, you know, so they avoid that. But then a lot of the game's story, at least in this first act, has been very like I've definitely seen like black like nerds, content creators, writers talk about like, man, I'm dealing with a lot of racism in this game <laughs> and I deal with enough racism as is for the whole first arc of the game to be about racism. Um, you know, so it's, it's not, it, I think, I think it is interesting, right. To think a, about the way these things, uh, evolve. I think it's a nuanced conversation. Right? It is. It like, is nuanced. Um, like, like, like it's not like, like, out here in the real world, we can look at, you know, we could look like, for example, anti-black racism and say, that's bad. You know, like, like this is, this is fucking racist and straight up and the racist here should be thrown into a, a meat grinder or like a wood chipper or something like that. Right. Um, which I totally for, um, but in something like wood chippers for 2024, let's go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Vote in the wood chipper and strapped to the front of a truck and just <laughs> to, dead know, rising style. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, but like, and, and for something like D and D, like to me, again, like I'm, I'm an idiot. Right. So like, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt, but like, to me, like an elf that lives 1200 years, it makes sense for that elf to be smarter than your average, you know, human that lives for an average of 80 years because they've accumulated so much knowledge and wisdom over the years. Yeah, probably. Y um, you know, like, like it makes sense for a, um, Try, I'll, I'll give you another example. It makes sense for an orc to get like a strength buff, right? Because because they if they're literally about, physically bigger and bulkier on huge. average. Like yeah, you know. like 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 so. You know, like I can see where some people are coming from, and I could I on, on this issue, I can see. I, I hate to be a both sides guy, but I can I think there are cogent arguments to make for for either side. Well, and I think like again, the character creator in Baldur's Gate, which is based on changes that have been made to D and D recently, right, is the idea that like there is a difference between actual racial traits of like again elves having dark vision, for example, or like dragonborn having a breath attack. Because you're like, like, hey, humans are not generally born with the ability to spit ice because of their <laughs> blue dragon, uh, it'd be white dragon heritage um, versus the dragon born is. So, like, it makes sense to have those differences versus the, the traditional stat bonuses being things you can pick out now. Because now you can totally be like, yeah, my my elf wizard is. 800 years old and has been studying magic for his whole life. So yeah, obviously he's more intelligent than everyone else. And this is a part of that, you know, versus, you know, if I have like a 600 year old elf who's a, been a line cook all his life, 
but has suddenly found the the talent for music and has become a bard. Like he's probably not the most well read dude. <laughs> if he's a six hundred year old line cook, you know. Well, I actually started as an a, an orc bard, but I just could not take myself seriously. I don't um, really like the way the orcs look, in because I and, wanted and I to hated make that too. Yeah, I was not a fan. I wanted to make like an orc, like a suave with, orc rogue, with like small tusks, right? Like small. T- I'd be no, down I, for the tusks, but is this? They have like they have big lips and the big like brutish piggy noses like, and kind uh, of sloping forehead. Uh, they look a little stereotypically dumb. I love again, like not to bring up the most popular shit in. D and D right now. Um, but if you look up uh critical role, there's a character named Ford um, spelled like Fjord and John, I'd like you to Google this. Um, so critical role Ford Fjord is a half orc. Um, critical role. Spelled like, like the Fjords, like not you're pining fjord, for the Fjords. Like Ford tough. All yeah. Right. Fjord. Although it's pronounced Ford. So, but like that's a half orc character. Oh, right? that's basically you as an orc. Well, you know, we're moving in the direction of like, okay, he's got the greener skin. Now his tusks are filed down. Um, oh, dude, you know who this is? That's Tony Stork. Shut the fuck up. But that's like, what he looks like, Derek. Tell me, I'm going to drop this shit in chat. I'm going to drop this shit in chat. You motherfuckers tell me. You tell me that this does not look. That's That's Tony Stork. Right Shut there. the fuck this up. This is John. this is one of the he is a variant of Tony Stark. Dude, tell me I'm fucking lying. Look at his hair and his goatee. Like now the now the bonus I will give to Baldur's Gate, while I'm not a big well, I'm like not super into the way that their orcs are designed, in terms of like I kind of like them to be a little more a little less like piggish and a little more humanoid. Um <laughs> they do at least make like the female orcs look like female versions of the male orcs. And we all know fantasy has that problem of like the dude version of a race will be like the wild out there thing. And then the female version of a race will just be like a lady with colored skin and maybe horns or ears. And that's it. So, um, you know, they're at least consistent. But I just looked up Jester. Hello. I told you you'd be a Jester fan. Um, uh, although she's not mean, she's very much the opposite. Oh, uh, see, so, I don't who 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 wants that? So, but like, we we got on a real big aside about like tabletop RPGs in general. Um, I've seen a lot of people being like, "This is the way forward, right?" This the, games like Baldur's Gate three, like this should be everyone's saying like the new standard, the thing that that you should be making. Look at how successful this is. If you just make a Baldur's Gate three, you will have this success. And I think that's a complicated conversation, right? Like. I don't think it's that straightforward. It's not. And, um, and, and, you know, like I said, there are, I mean, there are, there are arguments, I think on either side that hold water uh, on an issue like that. But what I'm thankful for is that the conversation is being had at all. Right. Because, yeah. because, you know, like, you know, it, 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 because it's an interesting, you know, like I would not have considered that before you, before you brought it up to me. Right. Like, oh, yeah. okay, yeah, I, I can see that. Like, I'm still of the mindset that like, you know, I can see why like elves, for example, would have certain advantages over like a gnome, right? Or like an orc would have certain advantages over a, you know, like a human. But Oh, that okay. Said, I, I got confused for a moment from where we, I see. We're back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Continue. I, I, I'm I, sorry. I, yeah, I was just like, like in general, I'm glad all these conversations are happening. Um, because yeah. again, like, you know, the things that we enjoy won't get better unless we criticize them and we pick them apart and put them back together. Yeah. Right? And sometimes you think about a thing and you go like, am I seeing something here? Am I seeing a problem? And and maybe you eventually decide like, I don't know that I see the problem, but like I thought about it and I can understand where somebody else would see a problem. And like, Hmm, you know, we're thinking about, but, Jeff, um, I, feel bad. I feel like, we're, I feel like we're not giving you much of a chance to talk, Jeff. No, I'm, I'm enjoying listening to it all. I just, like I said, I haven't played the game. I have no exposure yeah. to D and D. I just have, uh, you know, 90% of the words you guys are saying make no sense to me, but well, I, I find it fascinating. We're moving in a direction because... that Jeff will, will understand a bit better. Well, I think. yeah, I, I was going to say like Derek, I mean, you were touching on like, you know, this kind of like raising the bar and raising the standard. And, um, I don't know if that's where we're going next, but yes, yes. 100%. Uh, I I've had that conversation, um, uh, with people in the discord about like certain games too. And I think it's like, 
I think it's fine to look at sometimes games and be like, this should be in every game from now on. Like things like to me personally, that's really important. Being able to save at any time, especially when mm-hmm. like you're older and like your time's valuable. Like I like to play games for 20 minutes before work. If I get stuck in a two hour cutscene, I can't save. I can't quit. Like that. That's fucking bullshit. I'm sorry. Like it doesn't make the game harder. It doesn't make the game better. It's just a waste of my goddamn time. Um, that's, you know, within reason, that's something I think most games should have. But like once or twice in a generation, you get like a game that's just a pinnacle of the medium. And I don't feel like it's fair to make that the standard. I think we should be like, this is an exceptional achievement, but we should not look down on games that don't reach that. Uh, This kind of happened when The Witcher 3 came out. Um, Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, even more recently, Breath of the Wild. And I... I, I'm not going to entertain the comparisons because I really don't understand why they were compared. But like, you know, something like Horizon Zero Dawn, it's like, regardless of where you stand with the two, like both can be good games. And just because every game is not doing what Breath of the Wild is in terms of reinventing how we approach game design doesn't mean they're not good and doesn't mean they still can't come out. Um, and, and the other reality is like a lot of the circumstances in which games are made are not all equal. And yeah, for sure. studios had the opportunity to release this in early access and take their time and, you know, take feedback and gradually work on it. They're both the developer and the publisher. To my knowledge, they were not heavily pressured. It's very different than um, a studio working under Sony being told like or, or EA or Ubisoft or whatever be like this game has to come out in six months because it's lined up you know this avatar games lined up with the movie and we have all these stakeholders and they cannot like yeah it's just you you know you you, you just can't apply the same thing so um, I think the brand recognition of like Baldur's Gate and and Dungeons and Dragons like both mm-hmm. separately and combined um adds a lot to that too right of like yeah. Most studios trying to make their own CRPG are not going to have Dungeons and Dragons, you know, mm-hmm. as wind in their sails. They're not going to be making the third entry and they're not going to be making a sequel follow up. However, it's it's so far past. It's really not a sequel. But anyway, um, to one of the most like highly praised games of all time, you know, mm-hmm. they be like you mentioned, they were in early access for years and all that time they kept making money off sales of the game. Yeah. That would not have happened if this was not Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. if this was just, you know, uh, fucking, you know, blah, 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 yeah. that would never have happened. Um, you know, so there's just there's circumstances behind why this game has blown up and like they could afford to put this much money and polish into it that mm-hmm. I, I just I think it's I I'd agree with what a lot of people are saying that you can't expect this out of developers. This is a really unique situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, um, honestly, like I, I did not expect to go into and I talk about Baldur's Gate to like get into conversations like this. Right. And, and I, yeah. I feel like that is the, that is kind of the fundamental, you know, power of games like this, right? Like, like not just Baldur's Gate, but like, you know, D and D in general, right? Like, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, when you have, and I think like Derek, how many people worldwide play D and D? Like it's it's like in the oh, I don't even want to think. I don't. I I could not even begin to like get in the number, tens and ten, like uh, maybe hundred million, right? Like it's it's the most uh, popular. I think that's probably overdoing it. I think tabletop what? RPGs are still a huge niche, but D and D is easily the most popular of the lot. And the thing is, D and D's brand recognition is so big because of other things, right? D and D is huge not just because of people playing the game, but because of podcasts like Critical Role and Dimension Twenty, right? It's big because there was an old cartoon and some Capcom games and some famous PC games, and now a new game and a new movie, right? Like what what, what campaign setting is the Critical Role stuff uh, setting? It's 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 completely original. Oh, it's original. Okay. It's not like Forgotten Realms or something. No. Okay. Um. But but yeah, like, you know, it's it's it is a massive multimedia like brand that I know for a while didn't have a lot of power. It was very much like a super nerdy thing. But Critical Role, Critical Role made it cool again. Right. And then Dimension 20, I think it really was like the one two punch of 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 permanently cementing you know, D and D is, is something just like a centerpiece of, of like mainstream nerdy culture. Um, 
you know, and, and that's just why, like, again, like, I, I don't think you can com- you can pretend this is a normal CRPG, right? You could never make like a Disco Elysium and it blow up like this, right? Right. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you could never make a uh, a Fallout. Well, maybe maybe you even could with Fallout. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you could go back to those roots with something with that kind of brand recognition. I don't know. But like the fact that I even question it there, you know, Mm -hmm. what I do think. You know, a lot of people saying like, you know, this should be the gold standard, et cetera. Something I do think people are touching on that. I think a lot of articles talking about like why we can't make that comparison miss is that a lot of what. Baldur's Gate 3 succeeds at to me is stuff that would work regardless of scale right like we talked about like the cast of characters being compelling interesting weirdo band of rogues right having that old like like Bioware energy right not that Aiden Pierce uh, yeah, like, yeah. Either. There's no, there's no iconic hats in the, yeah. in, the in, in this. Just game. about every one of these assholes in Baldur's Gate Three is is going to become iconic for real. Um, and it was, it was just well written, well designed, well thought out, engaging characters that people connect to. Right, a lot of the things that made this game blow up, the shit like the the bear fucking, right, like is 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 like we we can joke, but the thing is, they found something weird. And kind of funny, right? And kind of like you're gonna have an opinion. You're gonna be like, "That's fucking weird." But like, mm-hmm. you know, if you're gonna let me be weird, I like I respect that. And a much smaller game could have done that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a much smaller game than Baldur's Gate Three currently is could have had like the weird shit that's going viral about being able to like throw the child. You know, that's Wait, I've what? seen lots. Of, I've seen lots of clips of people figuring out they can throw children and and like oh, it's I'm the go glee of it. Tonight, obviously, right? Like. And like again, you don't have to be a 120 hour <laughs> RPG to let people do weird shit that goes viral. You know, Eric, have you met the dog yet? I've met the dog. I you accidentally know upset the dog. I found a ball. You, if you throw it, he'll go get it and bring it back. Ah, I love him, Derek. But, did you meet the owl bear cub yet? I did. We got it. We can't bring up. Th- all of these instances. John. I mean, these aren't. I mean, these aren't spoilers. But, no, I mean, but like, we gotta let people discover shit. Um, the owl bear cub and the dog are friends now. But um, yeah, it's it's. The, the, I think the thing is that like a lot of us have missed like old Bioware, right? And I can see a, a version of Baldur's Gate three that got made on the Xbox three hundred and sixty. That was a thirty yeah, hour RPG, that. right? And a lot of stuff was cut out of it. A lot of complexity was cut out of it, but it was still an instant classic. Yeah. You know, um, I can see that. And maybe sure. I hope that's what, what folks take away is that like, there really is a lot of room for big, like single player or like local multiplayer, right? That's going to yeah. be a big part of it. RPGs um, can succeed. You don't need the service game elements. You don't need a shitload of in game, you know, monetization, Right. That doesn't necessarily help you. In fact, it could hurt you, Um, you know, make something weird and fun and engaging, make something with a lot of um, what's the word I'm looking for, like identity and purpose and trust in your developers identity, you know, in their vision. So. So, yeah, it's just wild that, like, you know, uh, so, so far I've got two Game of the Year candidates. It's Final Fantasy 16 and... Baldur's I've got Gate. so many. I'm I'm in trouble this year, for sure. You know, and the year's uh, only half over. So, um, yeah, actually, the year's more than half over. Yeah. Uh, but, so, which is wild to think about. Yeah, you're in, uh, that's, uh, I don't know if you can read numbers, but um, it's AC, SDGC Live 8, 10, 23... So we're well past that halfway point. Yeah. And Derek, just think we've got, we've still got another, we got another game coming out this month. Son of a bitch. Armored core. I forgot. I forgot that was August. Like two weeks Shit. away. Dude. It's like, and then it's after that, we've got our armored core game. Like you're not going to not play October that. October games. Spider-Man oh. in September. The Spider-Man is weeks away. Mortal Kombat's point. in September. Mortal Kombat. Um, Fuck, man. 
fucking Super Mario RPG remake, Star Ocean 2. Um, there's also there's something I'm forgetting. Um, there's a big one I'm forgetting. Um, I need to quit oh, my job. Yeah, like That's dude, the yeah, only way. The amount of games coming out is just fucking stupid. Um, but uh, finally, I guess so. So we filled like a whole ass over an hour with uh, with Baldur's Gate three, and I could talk yeah. more about it. But there's a couple other things I, that we wanted to I dig on here. Maybe hold on to the <laughs> Twisted Metal feels like the lightest conversation, and yeah, it's something we could yeah. bring up later. Especially like uh, I, Justin yeah. brought it up, and I think Justin has some things he wants to say about that. So like we can hold on to that for a future discussion about. Um, there, there uh, is. It one. actually just came out today. Here, it was delayed for some reason. So I. I might actually watch some of it and have have some thoughts too if we wait a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah if sure. we want to do it this week, yeah. I'll watch an episode. I myself. haven't seen it, so um, it'd be worth yeah watching to, yeah. to have some thoughts there, on. There is one more thing about Baldur's Gate that I did want to bring up, and yeah. it's the thing about save scumming. Um, it's you oh know, yeah, it's, what a what a silly yeah. So, let so, people play so, however the fuck they want, dude. I don't so care. there's this big <laughs> thing. It's like it's reignited the debate about saves coming. To me, there's I don't think never that's been a true. Debate. Like I think like, there's like fu- they, I think the, I haven't read that article. Play the game um, how you fucking want. Like, but I don't... presume that it's yet another example of we found three people tweeting about a thing and projected well, there, it out. Say, so there are very prominent streamers who are doing streams of Baldur's Gate 3 and they're like, no save scums here. And it's like, that okay, That doesn't great. mean anything like, to me because prominent cool. streamers used to mean people like PewDiePie. It means people like yeah. Dr. Disrespect. Like, yeah, like prominent cool. streamer actually just some. means noted Asshole. local idiot with a lot of attention. Yeah. So yeah. So, so, but, but Spoken like, as somebody who does a live podcast on Twitch, there's so, no yes, debate. I recognize there's no debate about save scumming. If you, if you want to play the game without lo- reloading a save, do it. If you, if you want to save scum, do it. Don't well, let anybody fucking like, gatekeep the, how you play your games. Not even about like, save scum. It's just like a game is a product that you buy. So yeah, if you buy a car and you want to pull it apart, do it. And you want to like, put a stupid paint job on it do it right you buy a game you want to mod the shit out of it do it like you want to you know yeah. assuming you're not like impacting other people's experience obviously right like trolling them in like a multiplayer game but like yeah like if you want to like put in a god sheet and just fly around the world and like give yourself free money who gives a shit yeah, like, do as you will. yeah. Do as i you think will. we should just ignore uh anyone who says otherwise yeah absolutely um there was something else I wanted to hit on that's not Baldur's Gate 3 related, and that is, um, and I can't believe we didn't bring those up in, as possible topics on Discord, but uh, it is uh, notable that um, Bungie has off the oh, okay. David Ke- or, uh, Keith David as the new voice of Commander Zavala, taking over for the unfortunately departed uh, Lance Reddick. Um, and Keith... Uh, had a very very cool and, and humble video that he put out about it honestly like as somebody who fell off destiny years and years ago and will n- almost certainly never go back um like i'll say this they could not have picked a better replacement for well there's no replacing lance riddick but they could not no, have no 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 but somebody has if you want to keep like, the character going you need a new voice actor keith david's not keith only david's, one of the best voice actors yep. in the in fucking history i mean incredible actor but also a class act, right? I've yeah. never heard a bad word about Keith David. So the man's dripping with charisma. He yeah. seems like a genuinely really good dude. And he sounds um, like Lance Reddick. Like he, he's got a very, very similar tone. He's got another very pitch. deep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, well, yeah. It's perfect for Zavala. And, he'll he'll and, embody a similar space. Um, yeah. And it's clear that he recognizes like the importance of stepping into that role and like what that means. You know, it's not the first time he's done something like that either. Stepping into the 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 shoes of you know a character inhabited by a a a, a now past black actor. You know, so well, uh, uh, it means a lot. I had an interesting wake up call earlier because I was again talking about it in our Discord, and I was the thought had entered my mind that like you know Bungie might retire the character, whatever. We, like we've seen movies do. Um, but this is my very privileged uh, North American white ass thinking like, uh, you know, it didn't enter my mind that this is a character that's, uh, as our friend Deal pointed out, that's voiced in 10 other languages by 10 other voice actors, um, many of whom are already like beloved in the way that that Lance Reddick is for their respective audiences. Yeah. So like it would be extremely disrespectful, um, you know, I, again, not, nothing against Lance Reddick, but like to them to to say that this one person and this one person only embodies the character. It's you that's know that's a good point. The, the character is what's important, and uh, I my belief is that most performers who care about the character and the story 
um, would fully support something like this and want that legacy to continue and want that story to continue to be told. And I think uh, Lance absolutely, I think, would, would approve of Keith David. You know, this is why, like, you know, I'll bring up Black Panther. Like, there was a lot of discourse about whether or not they should have recast T'Challa after Chadwick Boseman very unfortunately passed away, right? And I was always on the side of, you know, recast him because, you know, I, I loved what Chadwick Boseman did for that character, but the character, but he was not T'Challa. I think T'Challa I understand, though, character. why a lot of people in the moment, because what I saw, mm-hmm. what I think I've seen from my perspective is a lot of people in the moment right we're like this this has got to be the end right sure. and who and who with the benefit of hindsight years down the road have gone we could probably recast this character but yeah. i think that that i think it also like it it just for us it's a comic book character right like for us stupid nerds who grew up reading like fantastic but, but, four but, but, but like but, but but like jeff made a great point jeff made a great point like when he said like you know these actors would want these characters recast chadwick boseman's brother came out and said Chadwick wanted him recast. Sure. Like, but like, again, like, that's all stuff like, in conversations after the fact, right? At yeah. the time, what what happened is a, a a huge group of people who this is the one and only time they'd ever seen anything quite like that. Yeah. Right. A a, a, a mm-hmm. mainstream modern superhero hitting with the best of them, you know, that that looked and re, you know, represented, you know, them and and spoke to like you know, the, the painful history of colonialism and things like that and, and showed a, a, a vision without that. Um, like for me and you, Black Panther is a character from Fantastic Four comics originally. And for most of the world, Black Panther was Chadwick Boseman in a suit. You mm-hmm. know, it's just, it's hard, you know. But yeah. I think, I think that, that that's a really good point. I actually really like you bringing that up, Jeff, of, of the idea that like this is a character voiced in so many regions by so many people. There's no one definitive. It's very like, you know, America centric to be like, well, mm-hmm. the guy who voiced him in America is dead. So the character should go, yeah, right. you know, um, when this is a character who's, who's, you know, does not wear anyone's face. You know, I think that is different. So mm-hmm. that's a really I, I also I, like like I viewed it as a chance. Like I viewed John. Like, how did I'm, you actually? You went off script with some shit where I was like, "Here we go." John's gonna bring up a topic we didn't fucking clear in advance, and you actually found something, stumbled ass first into something kind of uh, kind of deep. I tend to do that, Derek. Mm, well, sure. And now to loop the conversation back to Final Fantasy VI. My no! <laughs> the beautiful segue into Final Fantasy VI and the Phantom Train, really, because I feel like the Phantom Train rolling through the. We don't four, have the time. We have twelve minutes left. We don't have really time. just kind of Derek. It, it kind of embodies the 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 journey that we're all taking spiritually um, uh, until one day life just suplexes you right off the tracks and. It, it's up to you to to find your inner um, your inner you know blitz and uh, and and just kind of you know right the ship again. You're you trying know? too fucking hard, bud. I'm what do we saying, what do we want to do last, Eric? I'm just saying this will be this will be shorter, um, which maybe works because I don't know how much we have to say about this. But um, so Final Fantasy 14 Fan Fest and Evo were both recently Ooh, within the last couple of weeks. Evo was last weekend. And, Evo was last weekend, and what uh, Fan Fest was like a week before that. Yeah, something like something that. Something like that. Um, and in both cases, um, well, the events have ended up being kind of COVID super spreader events. Um, tons yeah. of people have come down with COVID from Fan Fest and from Evo, and uh, you, you know, know there's been are. annoying um, discourse about like. I, I think I think it becomes very easy for everyone to hyper focus on like one person who knew they had COVID but put a mask on and went anyway, and like that's that is like a horrible like if you know you're positive stay the fuck home if you even think you're sick stay the fuck home, you know. But like you don't get these super spreader events out of one sick person. I mean, you right? can for sure. I mean, you know, I mean, the one at GDC was from one person. Mm, and I know where Derek's going. Just that we know exactly of. where I'm going. Yeah. Just that we know of, right? Like, I, you know, look, yeah, I, so, I really, I don't want to name names because it's, 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 not, past point, it's not worth but, it, right? Obviously, like, it's not our place to get into this shit, um, even if I'm upset. But, like, the person who we know went to events outside GDC 22 
um, and who got people sick with COVID because they knew they had COVID, like that's the only person who admitted that they knew they had COVID. Right. And as I, as I, and I got yelled at for saying this, but I was like, that was not the only COVID positive person who was there. That might not even be the only COVID positive person who knew they were positive. But, right. But They're just the one that said something. The, but I mean, so like, right. But like, you know, it's like, so, like, you know, sorry, but you know, you, you are the one that we know about, like, you know, so you're going to take the heat, like, you know, you're going to take the brunt of the heat. I want to, I want to focus on something that was said in chat. Uh, let me scroll up here real quick. Um, cons have always been super spreader events. Always. I get it. You right? always like, get con crud. The, the, the con in the crud, years right? before like, COVID, but you, like, you but got, like, but, but you have like, you know, <laughs> you know, or like, you know, oh, I got a cold or, but, but this time it involved a fucking virus that killed millions. Well, that's, that's I don't think that comment was like, meant in terms of like to diminish it. I think that's oh, no, more no, of no, like, no, 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 understanding oh, like yeah, you, you no. should know that a con is a place where like shit's going to spread because that has always been how it has worked. It is always a disease hotspot. Right. So no, for during sure. no, the no, age no, no. of COVID. I wasn't COVID. disparaging the comment at all. What I want to say is that like in the past, I probably would have gone to a con with a, with a small cold, like, you know, cause it's like, okay, whatever. It's a cold. I'll, I'll be fine. Right. Um, Brit. <laughs> hey, Jesus Christ, Brit. <laughs> I like, I happen to look over in chat. I'm about to make a point. I don't know what the fuck my point was now, but yeah, God damn it. Well, no, in um, the age of, in the age of COVID, right? Like things that were already, like spreader events, easy places to ease. Like you, you, a place where you used to pick up the con crud is now a place where you pick up COVID, you know? And yeah, um, I, I guess my point is, is like, people need to be more fucking careful now because now you got a virus out there that has responsible for millions of deaths worldwide. Like, I both, I both still old. want, and I know uh fan fest at least. Didn't, and I think Evo also didn't require masks while you were there. And I think that that's a thing that like, I, I, I still feel that events should be mandating masks at places that are going to have high attendance gatherings. But at the yeah. same time, like a bunch of people crammed it. Like I've seen photos of some of these cons. Like there's man. only so much those masks are going to yeah, do. Yeah. Not when you got that many people packed in that mm-hmm. tight a space. So, I mean, that's, um, that that's kind of like where my point was going to go is, um, you know, like most people who know me well know what, you know, a hard time I had with COVID. Like I would never diminish the disease. Uh, it's kind of like what again we talked about nuanced nuanced topics. Absolutely, these events could require masks. It would certainly be a good thing. I would be in support of it. But at the same time, if you go to an event like this, you have to. I'm going to Disneyland in September. I have an understanding that there is a decent likelihood that I will get sick being around that many people. Um, for a few days, that's a risk that I've accepted to take. I would still like for them to do what is in their power to mitigate that and protect me. But I, I share some of that responsibility. But, you know, as regards to like masking and mask policies, I, I'm I'm not a, you know, a medical expert. This is all based on stuff my anxiety has driven me to read over the years because I became obsessed with this, is that masking works and it absolutely works and it's very effective. It's been used in hospitals forever before people were convoying and yeah. protesting. It works when you mask properly. It works mm-hmm. when you have, and especially with the new variants, cloth masks do nothing. Surgical masks do nothing. You need a properly fitted N95 with no leakage above the nose, no leakage around the cheeks. It has to be secure to your face with no ga- the gaps. None um, of this. None should, of this. I left some gap. room at the sides of my nose. Yeah, so you Got can him. breathe. It should not be hanging down below your nose. You should be washing your hands before you remove it and after you put it back on so that you don't contaminate it. So when that's not happening and you have no one policing that and you have everyone wearing a variety of quality masks, removing them to eat and drink completely ruins it. The mask should not come off. Removing it to hang out with friends in hotel rooms and events outside, going to restaurants outside the event, bringing it back in. It just, it would help. I'm not convinced that it would have prevented these, especially since it sounds like there's a bit right. of a bit of COVID resurgence just going on in general. And I think it's coinciding because we have had a lot of big events this is not these are not the only two and they are certainly not at least here nobody is requiring masks and i think um i also feel a little bit for organizations who i think (laughs) might want to and it's unfortunate that our governments completely failed at controlling this years ago and still fail to um you know deliver proper mask mandates uh because the thing a lot of businesses struggle with here is the vitriol and anger and these low-paid employees working at these events don't want to deal with it and it's easier to just not do it because 
uh, you're, the governments are downloading that responsibility to these organizations being like, okay, you can do it if you want, but they know that since it's not a law, they're going to have a very hard time enforcing it. People don't like it, but when it comes from a higher authority, there's a lot more acceptance and understanding of that, and it gives a better position to the it organizations. It takes the heat off of, like, yeah. the poor fucker ringing out groceries. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Because it's not their policy. Oh, it's federal law. There's nothing I can do. It's, it's an easier sell. Um, it's unfortunate all around, and I, I definitely, uh, of course, there's no excuse uh, to knowingly be positive. But like the other fact is, um, it sounds like here, testing kits are not going to be available within a year. You will literally not be able to know if the illness you have is COVID or not, which is like common sense. If you if you're sick, stay home. If you absolutely have to go out, wear a mask. But at the same time, like understand that illness is out there, and unfortunately, COVID's a part of it now. And like, I, I don't know. Like they're just. I, I don't really know if there's a good solution is, is where I'm going with. I think at that. this point, like it's kind of like you brought up, we're kind of years past the solution. We needed to handle mm -hmm. this right back in 2020. We needed to shut down for a couple of months and pay people to stay home. And we didn't. And as a result, like Pandora's box was opened and we have slowly over time, especially with the existence of vaccines, right and like mm. the way things have mutated it does seem like the disease has slowly become slightly less deadly right it it seems like like obviously most of us have a higher general level of protection mm. because of the vaccines you know and like the situation's better than it was two three years ago but at the same time it's just become a fully endemic thing we'll probably never get rid of so you no, we're going to have COVID season every year now. We have to be, I think we owe it to be careful, right? To try and reduce the spread just like we do with the flu, right? Although COVID is much more serious than the flu and has mm -hmm. sometimes horrible long-term effects that the flu does not tend to give people. So major differences there. Um, yeah, exactly. Karnak brought it up right as I was talking about it, right? Long COVID's not a joke. Yeah. Um, but like, Man, if you're going to go to a concert, if you're going to go to a big like gaming expo, something like this, you need to just accept that you're putting yourself at risk of getting sick. Also, get the mm -hmm. fucking vaccine. Yeah, get the fucking vaccine unless you have a genuine medical reason not to. But mm -hmm. the Most number people of people don't. who genuinely have a medical reason not to is vanishingly slim. Yeah. So. Um, and I mean that the Derek said what I was trying to say earlier like uh, that's kind of where I was going with the, you know, the organizations can put in measures, but ultimately it's up to us. And unfortunately, yeah. I think I, I try really hard to be optimistic, but unfortunately, you know, I think society has shown a lot of their true colors in recent years. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all the more reason, like, you know, for those of us who do care to do our best, you know, no one's perfect. I often struggle with like, are my allergies just really bad today? Like, do I cancel my entire week's itinerary because yeah. I got a little sniffle? It's hard, right? It's a gray area. It's different than like having a positive test kit in your hand and knowing you have COVID. But all we can do is the best and just use common sense and try to protect each other. And especially, um, like you said, like most of us healthy individuals, the risk is greatly reduced compared to a few years ago. There are many people uh, for various reasons that are immunocompromised that can't and they do their best. But yeah. we still we should still feel an obligation to do our best to protect them because it's not un it's not fair to ask them to not go to these conventions and and stay home because they don't have a choice it's between complete isolation or potential death um and so really i think it's people at these kind of cons it sucks like you want to go there but you got to do the right thing lives matter more than you know a game yeah i'm yeah. not gonna say that like not getting COVID is a moral virtue and that like getting COVID mm -hmm. is a is a moral failing because it's not how this fucking works but like it is August of 2023. We're three and a half years past COVID, like mm. breaking out into the wild. Jesus. I've never caught it. Yeah. You know, like I've, I've been vaccinated. I wear masks mm. in busy areas. I'm careful. Right. Yeah. And, and, and at the same time, I don't work from home. I go into work, work. No, I don't, and, you know, I meet up with friends and family. Yeah. We got together for charity stuff. Right. And like you said, it's not to blame, like say it's people. I've flown a did, couple of times. It's just like proof. It's, I think, at least evidence that, like, you can at least mitigate it, right? I don't think it's yeah. pure luck that we haven't got it. I'm the same way. I'm very fortunate I don't have kids bringing in disease from 
daycare or school again not their right fault. it's just the sure. reality like as a parent i think most people who i know who were first to catch it were parents because mm-hmm. and i felt for them it's like what can i fucking do right like you you can't but um you know it's no coincidence that i think we we take the measures and do you know common sense and reasonable and stay home when we're sick and like you said mask in crowded areas and it helps it does and it helps protect other people not just yourself yeah it's um yeah i mean that's that's just what it boils down to is like it it, this needs to not be about like judging people for whether or not Mm -hmm. they've they've caught it or how many times they've caught Mm -hmm. it because you just you don't know but like we can we have actions we can take that will help reduce the chances of us getting it. If I don't get it, I can never spread it to anybody else, right? And like, yeah. you know, we can we can really really reduce. What what was that during the pandemic when everyone was masking? Um, the the winter of uh, twenty twenty into twenty twenty one was like the the lightest flu season ever. Yeah, yeah. Where, where we, the flu the almost flu disappeared. disappeared for a year or two. Yeah, because we mm-hmm. because we just were fucking careful. Right? And guess what? Like, the flu kill the flu kills a lot of people too. We saved a yeah. lot of fucking lives. Yeah. Everyone likes to say COVID's just the flu in like a way to minimize COVID, but like the flu is serious for a lot of for a lot of younger, you, you, older, you and immunocompromised folks. Shape. Oh I mean, my god, honestly, that flu! Honestly, the only reason that the flu doesn't kill more people in the United States and Canada is because of our, uh, you know, we have just a more developed health system than other parts of the world. Yeah, we get flu oh. shots, right? Like most people's workplaces, let you get a free flu shot. You know, even then, like I got the flu so fucking bad, I was hallucinating. I gave it to a shitload of people by accident because I didn't know I was sick before I traveled. And then when I got home, I had fucking pneumonia. Right. Yeah. Like and like, pneumonia like, kills healthy people. Yeah. yeah. Right. Pneum- the flu doesn't kill you necessarily at my age and my health. But if you get pneumonia, that shit will kill you. Pneumonia, it doesn't matter how many push ups you can do. Yeah, pneumonia can kill you. Um, and yeah. as somebody who who had covid for a w- fucking Thanksgiving week of all weeks. Um, oh, God, that's right. But I was careful as fuck and I got it. And that shit was no joke. Um, I woke up one night with a 103.2 degree fever. Uh, almost hospital time for me. Um, yeah. Ye- so we are, uh, we have reached the end of the show here. It uh, looks like, Oh, there there's Luna. Um, the only cat I like. Um, <laughs> what about Zeke? Zeke's fine. Oh, <laughs> I'm only saying that because Justin's not here. Uh, but um, so Derek, did you want to plug our uh, our Sunday activity? Yeah, a couple things to plug. Obviously, uh, if you're not there already, join the Discord. It's a good place, heavily moderated, place. safe place, fun place. Uh, you know, it's a it's a good crew. Despite having over 400 members, um, it is a. You believe uh, our Discord has over 400 people? It's a big place. I mean, now granted, not all of those people are. Or in fact, the majority of those people are not like regularly, daily active sure. or anything. But, but it's a, it's an active place. It's a good place. It is a safe place for marginalized folks. You know, mm-hmm. queer, neurodivergent. You know, people of color, etc. Um, you know, Plus so whole good spot. Fantasy channel. Yeah. Um. So we can get that out of our fucking system. Uh. You can support us obviously with subs here on Twitch or by supporting us on Patreon. As always, all of our content will always be free, but, um, you know, it, it helps us to, you know, pay to get to cons and major events and get together and do charity stuff. So, you know, that's uh, that's good stuff. You know, you should you should maybe consider it. But if you can't, that's fine, because things are hard right now. Um, so it's the charity stream. That's why it's not a necessity. Yeah. We got the charity stream is late October. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that as we get closer. Jefferson's going to be there. I think all the only person who's a maybe right now is Justin. So, yeah. And I think we'll figure out how to get Justin. We just got to, we got to figure we'll it out. We'll talk him into it. I've, I've, got we'll so many, it I've got so many mystery flavor beans waiting for Jeff. It's so good for him. If he comes, um, it is. and then, um, on Saturday, I think starting at 11 a.m. Eastern again, uh, John and I will. Is it Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Um, Sunday is supposed to be my Castle Bravo day, but Finn has not gotten back to me. Um, Saturday, we will be doing uh, the second part of our Mortal Kombat stream. I think we'll be doing the back half, roughly, of Mortal Kombat 9's story <laughs> mode. <laughs> and, uh, you know, raising money for the Entertainment Community Fund. That's money that will help financially support uh, struggling actors and writers while they're on strike right now. Um, I just read that Billy Porter had to sell his home um, because of financial hardship. Mm. Um, so, like, you know, hey, 
it's fucking happening. Bob Iger wanted people to, to lose their homes and, uh, you know, so, oh yes, I know good and fucking well what part, especially given how uh, obsessed John is with Sindel, although less so now because of Carlac, I know, new waifu. I mean, that's my only question, Derek. Yeah, so, but yeah, that'll um, be happening. It's going to be a good time. Um, yeah. Wait, does she? No, I, uh, the stream will be happening and we'll be raising money for charity. So oh, come- no, no, cause no, 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 no. In chat, I said Sindel disrobes as a joke and, and Josh said, yup. But he wasn't talking. He was about referring he was to something about. I was mentioning. Yeah, I also yeah. was yup though, and I was like, "Derek, let's do <laughs> more Please. combat tonight." No, like, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Carlac, Carlac is is where it's at. Like, D- Derek, Josh knows. You'll I'm gonna make a Mortal Kombat Carlac. fan out of John. Uh, it's gonna happen. Weirdly, mm. we're getting there, man. Dude, mm. you're gonna be kind of into it with nine, but when we hit Mortal Kombat X, you're gonna get weirdly into it. I know. Mm. So. Anyway, I don't know. We'll, we'll All find right. out on Saturday. All right, let's uh, let's cut it off here, guys. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, we will see you next week. And remember, kindness costs nothing. <laughs>